Ray tracing. That's been the big question, right? If you've been following my channel uh, about all this big Navi stuff, and you know, if you're new to the channel, hi, I do tech stuff. I started this channel a little over a month ago, and uh, thank you everybody who's been watching, liking, subscribing it. Anyway, I've been talking a lot about big Navi because I'm thinking about buying one. Um, anyway, one of the big questions was, what is the ray tracing performance gonna be like? And we've seen leaks that suggested it might be like 33%-ish slower than the, rel uh, the competitive Ampere cards, that type of a thing. Well, hey, look what I've got for you now. This is a slide published by AMD. I got it at videocards.com. Links to everything I talk about today will be in the description to the video. And they got it uh, from AMD and apparently were able to publish it a day early. According to video cards, right uh, here, it says that these will officially be published by AMD tomorrow. So you guys are getting this information a day early. And why has AMD been reluctant to talk about this? Well, for one thing, notice this is 1440p, not 4K. And we know that Ampere cards have been targeting that 4K at the high end with like your 3080 or your 3090. Well, we've already seen, if you've been following my channel again, that NVIDIA has stated that their ray tracing target was to have a good experience at 1440p. And when I heard that, the, to me, I heard... 60 frames per second or better at 1440p with ultra settings on in current titles. And this slide does seem to confirm that that's the case. So what do we have here exactly? So we have, the one I'm blocking over here is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, and they're getting, again, this is the highest DXR ultra settings, 82 frames average. Metro Exodus, ultra, DXR on, average, 67. Crisis Remastered. High ray tracing, high settings, average 90. Call of Duty Modern Warfare, DXR on, ultra settings, 95 average. Battlefield 5, ultra, DXR on, excuse me, <laughs> 70 frames per second average. So one way to read this chart is, nice job AMD. Uh, you buy an AMD card, you buy yourself a 6800 XT, you got yourself a 1440p monitor, you crank all these games up to ultra, you turn on the ray tracing to ultra, and you have yourself a very smooth, greater than 60 frames per second average experience in all of these games, and you are a happy customer. So from that perspective, which was what AMD said their target was, nice job AMD, you're meeting your targets. But from a we can compete with NVIDIA at the highest, uh, highest possible tier of graphics performance. Less of a nice job, as far as I can tell. Now, what I really wish that this article had, which it doesn't, let me refresh it in case they've updated it. Please have updated it. Nah. What I was hoping for was, how do the NVIDIA cards perform in these games? Uh, sometimes WCCF Tech gets that. Let's see if they've got it in the few minutes since I checked last time. Nope, they don't have it. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to do the best that I can, which is I have been Google searching to try to find benchmark results for like the 3080 and 3070 and things like that in these same games with these same settings at 1440p. And I've been able to track down some relevant results. Now, before we jump into those, please keep in mind that these results come from testing on a Ryzen 9 5900X platform with 16 gigabytes DDR4, 3200 memory with ultra settings. And you know what? The other benchmarks I'm gonna find for the 3080 and things like that, these are published by other sites. Most of them were not done on a, I mean, I doubt any of them were done on a 5900X since that just came out. And these are, set, these are tests that came out for like the 3080 reviews and things like that. So you can't completely directly compare these, but they should be in relatively the same ballpark if they were tested on a high-end CPU and you're mostly GPU bottlenecked at these types of settings. So it still will be a very relevant comparison. And I've done my best to make sure that they're done at the same settings and the same resolutions. But like I said, I'm not doing these tests myself. And so I'm just doing the best I can to bring you this information. Let's jump in to a Metro Exodus result. So I found this one at Eurogamer.net. Again, links to all my sources in the description. And again, as far as I can tell, these are the correct settings. We've got DX12, Ultra, Ultra Ray Tracing, and it's at 1440p. I'm assuming their numbers here are average frame rates since that's all that they're giving here. It wouldn't make sense for this to be like the lows or something, right? Or the highs. 
And let's take a look. So the RTX 3080 at 1440p with all these ultra settings in this game is averaging 90 on this particular test. So how did the AMD card do? Well, Metro Exodus was doing 67. And if we bust out a calculator, we can go 90 divided by 67 and we get 34 percent increase. So in other words, it's looking like the 3080 in Metro, at least, has a 34 percent performance advantage over the 6800 XT. And this is exactly what I had predicted using some of the leaked results that I had seen. However, this is not typical of some of these other games, as we're going to see. All right. So Keep in mind, again, this is the direct competitors here, the 6800 versus the 3080, theoretically priced within $50 of each other, if you can actually find one at launch for, or for MSRP, good luck, but that's the idea. So it's looking like if ray tracing is something that you're gonna care a lot about, and specifically in Metro, there's your 33% gap. And by the way, if we also look at, luckily, oops, wrong chart, wrong chart, here's the right chart. Uh, the 2080 Ti and the 3070, as we know, perform very similarly. They're getting 65, 66, and that's roughly, again, 67 here for the 6800. So you're getting roughly 3070 or 2080 Ti levels of ray tracing performance in this title from your 6800. But wait a minute, these guys also did Battlefield 5. Let me figure out where that one is. Okay, here's Battlefield 5, and... Now, here's one thing that I'm curious about. Maybe you guys will know in the comments, but I'm just not 100% sure on. Nowhere does this mention DLSS, but I'm not sure if maybe somehow that's factored in here, but I can't believe that a good review site wouldn't tell us if they were using DLSS. So as far as I can tell, this is not using DLSS, okay? I hope for AMD's sake that it is using DLSS because this is gonna be a much bigger win for, a for NVIDIA. Here's the 3080, 1440p, ultra settings, ultra ray tracing, as far as I can tell, not using DLSS, getting 115 frames per second. And the 6800 XT is getting 70. 115 divided by 70. That's a 64% win for the 3080 compared to the 6800 XT. That's a massive win for the 3080. And then if we actually jump down and compare it with the 3070 or the 2080 Ti, we're getting 89, 92, in other words, around 90. Again, 70 here for Battlefield 5. And if we go 90 over 70, uh, we're getting what, 29%-ish? So that, that's even a loss to the 3070 and the 2080 Ti in that particular title in Battlefield 5. But again, if you're looking at this just from the perspective of, I want really good rasterized performance from my AMD card. I want to be able to turn on ray tracing and stay above 60 frames per second at 1440p. If you look at it from that perspective, AMD is delivering. This is 70 frames per second average at ultra settings with, with ray tracing on, on a 1440p monitor. Um, that's not bad, right? That's a, gonna be a good experience for you. But it is looking like, according to this, that uh, NVIDIA would deliver a much better experience for you with ray tracing, especially in certain titles. Now, we can also compare this on other games. So I tried to find Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and I was able to find this here at overclocked.net. Um, and let's not use the overclocked result. Let's, so here's an NVIDIA RTX 3080 Founders Edition. Here's our performance numbers for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, DirectX 12 with ray tracing, highest preset with ultra ray tracing shadows. Okay, as far as I can tell, that's equivalent to this. Highest settings, DXR Ultra, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Um, so the AMD result here is 82 frames per second. Should be a good, nice, smooth experience. Now in this one, let's take a look right here where I believe this is the one we'd be looking at, this red bar. And the reason is when I, when I look down here, it's saying that the bright red is the 1440p average, okay? So the 1440p average seems to be 90. Well, 90 is more than 82, right? <laughs> okay, um, how much more than 82? So, well, 90 divided by 82 is a, what is that, 10% gain? Um, 
Is that is that right? Let me double check this. That that sounds like AMD is doing much better in in Tomb Raider uh, comparatively compared to what we saw in the other titles. Well, yeah, ninety, and that's the fourteen forty p average color. I, I'm not misreading this. So if your game is Tomb Raider, you've got uh, just a ten percent win for the thirty eighty. And then if we compared it to like, we don't have a 3070 here yet because I think these reviews were done before that launch, but we do have a 2080 Ti, which we know performs pretty close, which would be 71. And again, if we compare that, uh, the 82 beats it. So we've got 82 over 71, uh, giving you like a 15%, 15, 16% win over the 2080 Ti. So what am I gathering from all this? What I'm gathering is that this really depends on the implementation of ray tracing. Because like we saw, if we're comparing the 6800 with the 3080, since that, the 6800 XT with the 3080, since that's its direct competitor. In Battlefield 5, the 3080 was demolishing it with like 64% win. In, uh, what was it, Metro Exodus, the 3080 was winning solidly with like a 34% win. And then in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 3080 only had like a 10% lead. So that's just wildly different. And like I said, I've done my best to make sure that the settings we're looking at here are, um, are comparable. And that's the best I can do, guys. Um, I had some trouble tracking down in the short amount of time I had a relevant Crisis Remastered uh, performance thing, but you might be able to try to track one down yourself. Um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, I believe I was able to find. Um, let me double check on that. Yeah, so Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare with uh, ray tracing on, I wasn't able to find a 3080 to compare with, but I did find a 2080 Ti. And um, let's see, make sure I'm interpreting the graph correctly. So the dark gray would be the average. The dark gray would be the average. So that's looking like 93.5. And... Here's 95, so that's fairly even. So in Call of Duty Modern Warfare, it looks like the 2080 Ti, which is pretty equivalent to a 3070, is giving you roughly equal performance uh, with your 6800 XT. So that's, again, a different result than we were seeing uh, on some of these other games that we compared it with. And once again, I wasn't able to find a great Crisis Remastered per, uh, comparison. Okay, so what would be my takeaway from this? Um, one takeaway is we really, really need to see <laughs> independent reviews on the same system so we know it's 100% sure all the same settings in all these games and others because these were just wildly different percentage-wise on, on the comparison. That's crazy. So this is another reason why you might want to wait for independent reviews and not participate in the launch on the 18th maybe wait for the board partner cards, which come out a week later, right? That might be a good decision. Um, that's probably what I'll do if I end up getting one of these. Although personally, I might actually just sit out this generation. I usually upgrade every, every other generation. And I bought a 2070, it's fine. I'd like a new card, I might get one. I don't know, guys. Anyway, that's not the point. Uh, the point is, if you're looking at getting one, I would say that it does look like AMD is delivering a very solid ray tracing experience at 1440p. Ultra settings above 60 frames per second, but definitely does seem to be losing to NVIDIA in the ray tracing department. And we expected that. So if ray tracing is a huge deal to you, you know, that might decide you on which way to go. If ray tracing isn't that big of a deal to you, but you'd like to be able to turn it on and still have a playable game, that looks like that, that you can do that. So whether this matters to you is really just gonna depend on how much you care about ray tracing, especially in any particular title. And I think that's all we can say about that. Ray tracing is something that some people care a lot about and other people just don't. And I don't think I can really add a lot to that. If you made it to the end of this video, hit the like button. Or I guess dislike it if you if you hated it, but that hurts me in the YouTube algorithm, guys. <laughs> anyway, uh, speaking of YouTube algorithm, leaving comments, liking, subscribing, all that helps me out. And if you are interested in future tech content, you can think about hitting that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys have an excellent day.